Hello, Cyberland. My name's Marlin. The channel is Old Fart Hacks. Uh, this is part of the ongoing problem I've had with the tailstock on my mini lathe. The one from Velvor was just a horrible fit. I tried to work with them to see if I could get them to send me a new correctly cut foot plate, and they did not do that. They would not do that, so instead they gave me a small discount, a little over $200 on the lathe. Um, so, with that $200, I spent a chunk of change, and I'll put the actual numbers for these two things down in the text below. But anyway, what is in this box, box is a new tailstock. This comes from the Little Machine Shop group or company. They're reputed to be pretty good. I have talked to the people. They say that this, while it's not specifically listed for my particular 7x14 Velvor lathe, should fit. So, shall we open the box and see what's inside? I've got my little handy-dandy uh, box cutter here. Let me get it out. Okay. So, yes. Little box cutter. I may have to go get a bigger one. This one doesn't seem to be working all that well. Ah, ta -tum, ta -tum. Ah, ta -ta -ta -ta. I'll put the little thing away now before I stab myself with it. Okay, box is open. Inside the box we have, of all things, guess what? A box! We've got bubble thingies. We've got some of the other stuff I ordered. I ordered, um, oh yeah, this is some die chem that they had on sale. Apparently the tubes were leaky. And then there's a bolt here that I intend to use to set up eventually on the tailstock so that I can screw it in and out for uh, sideways or for uh, taper adjustment. I also bought a small live center, M2 live center. Anyway. Yeah, this tailstock cost me um, 86 bucks and 8616 plus basically uh, 17 bucks in shipping. So $103. Anyway, this is the tailstock. So it's a bit of my sleeve. Box as per tradition, left shoulder. Oh, I gotta get it out of there. You. Anyway, so inside we have the tailstock. At least I assume this is the tailstock. Let's see what we've got. Lots of time. Ta -ta -ta -tum -tum. Pretty well packed. This is the tail stock, and this is the knob, the hand wheel. I'll drop this off my left shoulder. So let's see if it has a slight difference from the Belvoir base plate. And yes, as you can see right here. The notch is much deeper. Give me a second. Let me go get something. I know. Don't sing. Shut up, Marlon. Anyway, can you see the difference in the notch depth between the Velvor plate and the little machine shop plate? Assuming everything else is correct, assuming this is set up for seven inches from here to to the center line here, which is what it has to be for 7 by 14 All should be good. This is the way a base plate should... Oh, that's nice. I got a spring on that, too. A base plate should look with the milled step here. Good groove. We'll see how well it works when we get it on the lathe. As I said, I'm hoping this should solve virtually all my tailstock problems, at least for now. I will probably recut the Velvore tailstock. 
this plate at some t this plate at some time in the future and put the valve wire back up. The plate's a little bit bigger. Eh, I don't know. We'll see. But as you can see, this the notch here is just too shallow, and there is no recess. The one reason you want to recess this is so it doesn't drag. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, the locking clamp is on the same side. I'm really not a favor of the locking clamp with the tailstock being here. Um, it does make it harder. But we shall see what we shall see. What does the spindle look like on the, or the wheel on this look like? Yeah. It's a little lighter than the one on the bellboard, so eventually I may go back to the bellboard, but this will certainly do for now. It's a cam lock. Cam lock mechanism is here. And what happens is the eccentric just pulls on this ring. That's interesting. There's a little problem problem right there this ring this loop is supposed to be over that pin there we go that's how that's supposed to work now you can see choo choo the adjustment on this will be a little harder as well in that the velvore has a nut under here you adjust this one you adjust by turning the plate but with the spring here once you have it set everything should stay more neatly the velvore tends to and you know the standard one tends to get out Hopefully the distance from here to here at this point will be adequate because right now we're out of thread and I don't want to be out of thread there. Anyway, give me a, a few seconds to start setting everything up across the shop and then we'll have this up on the lathe and we'll see how it works. See you in a bit. Okay folks, hi, I'm back. I now have this mounted up on the lathe. I adjusted the clamp so that it will clamp and hold in place, and that was easily done. Um, just a couple, the screw that holds the screw here is long enough, so that's not a problem. So, let's look at how the, the tail stock actually fits on the ways. And as you can see here, that's a much, much better fit than the Vivor. Um, the gaps are clear, and everything's as it should be. So let's go from there and see how it lines up with the spindle. Whee! Sliding along, sliding along. Okay. And that's about, you know, we'll be working from there. Um, as you can see, you know, aside from everything that's in the way here, the height is about right. The problem comes in, of course, on the left to right. We're going to have to adjust that because as you can see it's uh, quite a bit off to the left. So I'm going to stop the video once again and um, I'll do a preliminary adjustment on this and I'll be back. So on to part and eh, whatever. Be back in a few. Okay guys a quick mid process of adjusting it for left to right. Let me point out a couple of little problems they do have. They painted this obviously after it had been assembled and they overpaint. The paint's very heavy, so when you take this apart, the edges do break away. So there's a minus half point deduction for that. The quill, by the way, tailstock, or the quill alignment pen is right there, by the way, which is better than what they do with the Velvor, or Vivor, or whatever you want to pronounce it. Anyway, just thought I'd bring you this little bit. I'm probably going to take a file and uh, clean this surface up. I don't know, yeah, because I need to go, actually I need to go away from that surface, so I'm going to have a gap there no matter what. But anyway, just another quick little step in here. Okay, one other little thing with this. Um, the amount of travel here is limited, and it's limited by the shaft right here. So if you need more than that, you're going to have to elongate this hole in this direction. As I said, Nothing's perfect. I mean, you know, 89 bucks, what do you expect? But still better than what Vivor gave me.
I did clean up all the crud that was blocking and locking it, but the adjustment screw goes there and so on and so forth. Anyway, just a little bit more. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think you can see that that is now much, much better. Um, a bit fiddly, but these things are. Right now, the tailstock is clamped, I think. And then once you get it there, there's this little screw back here that, of course, you can see the screw barely, that they had um, painted over, of course. But um, once that is there, you can tighten up that screw lightly, and it will hold the position here, which then lets you pull the thing apart and get to the bolt underneath. So at this point, I'm reasonably happy. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video one more time, and then I'm going to... Uh, Clean up, fitting up, mounting up, drying up, setting up the belt, tail stock. I'll put it back on and we'll do a little bit of a drill in a hole in the end of something. So I'll be back again in another few. Okay, so on to what I think is going to be the final aside for me sitting around and pontificating for a few afterwards segment of this uh, video. Let's see what happens if I try and center drill. The new Char's tail stock is locked in place. I have my itty bitty little drill chuck in here, and it's about the smallest one you can buy. Really, that's the sad thing about this. I really do need to find a smaller one. This limits me a lot. But anyway, Well, all I can say is that worked one heck of a lot better than the tailstock that came with it. So, here's for the pontificate, pontific, pontification. Um, if you end up with one of these mini lays, they're all going to have that same tailstock problem. They're just, or China's shipping junk right now in that regards. You can fix the problem quite quickly for about a hundred bucks by picking up one of these tail stocks from the little machine shop it's you'll you'll spend about 20 minutes cleaning up the things they did wrong with it uh, there's some changes I will be making to that but overall it's a viable way of getting it to where your your drill bit will actually come in on center on height because that was the problem I was having with the Vivor I could get it on center but it was up a little bit you know, it's the old <laughs> sign error. Ooh, that's a key word nowadays. But anyway, this video is, I'm sure, going to be quite long enough. But the whole point is, for about a hundred bucks, the problem's more or less fixed. And um, Vivor gave me two hundred bucks to fix it. Anyway, hope you guys have a great day. Don't get caught, and you should. This is Marlon for Old Fart Hack saying bye-bye for now.